13 Sentinels Aegis Rim released a little over two months ago with a superb score of 86 on both Metacritic and OpenCritic, yet there's not much buzz about this game. Like at all. I mean, sure, it was nominated for Best Narrative at the Game Awards, but besides that, it came and went without anyone really noticing. It's a shame too because it's such an amazing game that deserves more recognition. I think a lot of people would enjoy it if they knew about it and gave it a try. But before I get ahead of myself, what exactly is 13 Sentinels and what makes it so great? 13 Sentinels was developed by Vanillaware, the same people who made Odin Sphere and Dragon's Crown and was published by Atlas. It's a peculiar game that's divided into two parts. The combat, which involves tactical tower defense gameplay, and the story, which uses a similar approach to graphical adventure games with the player interacting with the environment and NPCs to progress. It sounds like a weird mix, but it works. It's also a game that's difficult to describe because it's story driven and incorporates so many different concepts that going into too much detail will ruin all the surprises. On a broad scale, the story focuses on 13 individuals living in Japan who time travel and fight in giant mechs called Sentinels against giant robots called Kaijus. They come across androids, high-tech gadgets, and other sci-fi elements as they try to uncover the truth behind everything that's happening. The more I played, the more questions I had, and I became heavily invested in finding those answers. I wanted to know where the Sentinels and Kaijus came from, why the Kaijus were attacking Earth, and how did these students even get the power to control these Sentinels anyway? It was all very interesting, and as I uncovered the answers, the mysteries went even deeper, keeping me glued to the screen till the very end. There were unexpected surprises and twists that delivered a compelling story that will forever be ingrained in my mind. Each of the 13 protagonists offer a small glimpse of the whole picture. At first, this sounded like too many people to invest in, and it's rare to find everyone appealing, so I was not looking forward to having to play through with all the characters. To my surprise, I ended up liking all of their personalities, making this one of the few games where I absolutely loved the entire cast. I was drawn to Juro's passion for kaiju movies. I could relate to him when he would enthusiastically talk about all his favorite films, because I also get that excited when I talk about my interests. Shu was another great example with his joking and flirtatious attitude. It was something that was always fun to see, and a good contrast from the rest of the cast who were more serious. With so many characters, it can be overwhelming to have all their stories available at once, so only Juro is accessible at the start. As more progress is made in each character's stories, additional characters will become unlocked. At certain points, there will also be prerequisites that need to be met before any further advancement can be made. Some required combat encounters to be finished, while others needed part of another character's story to be completed. These restrictions were very helpful due to the nature of how this game is set up. Since all the characters' experiences are different and offer a small piece of the puzzle, if only one character is played through at a time, some events would be missing a lot of context. By restricting access to certain parts before I was ready, I was able to avoid being lost in the story, though it did mess up pacing sometimes. As someone who wouldn't consider themselves a fan of the visual novel or graphical adventure approach due to the lack of action, I still had a great time playing through the story. The Thought Cloud played an important role in this. As I investigated the area or talked to NPCs, a thought can be added to the Thought Cloud, which as you've probably guessed, is a collection of thoughts. Selecting a thought will make the character elaborate on it, giving more context to the story or clues on what to do next. These also acted as keys to unlock new areas to traverse to or start a new conversation that can reveal new revelations. These mechanics made the game feel less linear by rewarding exploration and made going through the story fun as I tried to figure out different ways to progress. The art also made it much easier to become immersed into not only the story, but the world and the characters in it. Vanillaware has a very specific style that's easily distinguishable from other 2D anime games. The artwork in their previous titles were gorgeous, so I knew 13 Sentinels would have the same quality of work. As I played through the game, exploring the different areas of the world, I took the time to appreciate the effort put into creating these settings. The attention to detail is extraordinary, and the use of different effects really bring out the life in the environment. Even though a majority of the time spent is spread out among a handful of places, it never got dull. The classroom is one location that I find myself in repeatedly, but there is a lot to admire here. The ambiance created from the rays of sunlight hitting the students, and the warm glow it gives off creates a very realistic impression of the world. Also, the nearby students weren't just static bodies standing around and doing nothing either. 
They were animated with different motions, such as the movement of a sleeping student's body when he takes a breath, or someone readjusting their grip because they're holding a heavy box for too long. This gives a genuine feel to the classroom that makes it feel alive. The subtle movements of objects in the background, such as tree leaves moving with the wind, also added the perfect touch to this feeling. The environment is incredibly alluring, and I can't help but be impressed. The stunning sceneries created from the art aren't the only aspect that deserves praise though. It also laid the groundwork for some amazing animations that look cool and creates some hype for what's about to happen. The Sentinel Star animations are one of the most memorable with their slick look and smoothness. Seeing a huge mech materialize in front of a character afterwards and shake the screen is pretty badass too. There were also a few short fight sequences between a sentinel and kaiju that were done well. The frame by frame looks awesome with the visual effects giving a nice impression of the impact felt from an attack. These animations are few and far between, but are that much more special when they do happen. While the art in the story portion of the game deserves its accolades, the look of combat is anything but inspiring. I was skeptical when I first saw it in action during one of Sega's 13 Sentinel streams. Visually, it lacks anything remarkable that would draw someone in, from flashy effects to cool looking animations. Units on the map were just displayed as pixel icons that made it hard to tell what things were. The fights took place in the same dull city landscape every time, and the visual effects of attacks were not appealing. However, beyond a subpar presentation, there is potential here. Combat can actually be quite enjoyable. It was designed well where it not only required good strategies on the battlefield to win, but also depended on figuring out a good team setup before jumping into the fight. The progression system also created rewarding growth after each battle through sentinel customizations and by learning new abilities. The mechanics are pretty straightforward and easy to pick up, so there isn't a need to spend a lot of time learning the ropes. There are 13 playable characters in total, each using one of four types of sentinels. However, only six characters can be deployed at a time, with the rest of them hanging back to defend the Aegis system. The goal is to keep the Aegis system from being corrupted by kaijus. Everything happens in real time, except when actions are being selected, in which case everything freezes, giving plenty of time to decide what to do or examine the battlefield. Characters have a few options at their disposal to make their mission a success. They can defend, which recovers energy points that's used for attacks while increasing their defense or they can repair their sentinel if they take too much damage. The wide variety of attacks are the highlight of combat and where the strategy and fun comes in. There are many different types of enemies with different properties. Some may be ground units, some are flyers, some may have shields, and some even have heavy duty armor that's hard to damage. On the flip side, each of these properties also comes with weaknesses that can be exploited. I had to figure out which attacks to use that would be the most effective, while also considering the wait time, range, EP cost, and affected targets. After completing a battle, characters who have gone into combat will accumulate stress due to piloting the sentinels. When this stress is maxed out, they go into a state called brain overload, where they will need to be benched for the next battle to fully recover. This mechanic helped add an extra layer of strategy that made combat more interesting and diverse by forcing me to think about how to balance the strike teams to take care of the threats while keeping a character's operating limit in mind. A number of meta chips will also be gained after winning and the amount will depend on the performance. These can be used to enhance the sentinels, learn new abilities, and upgrade the meta system which provides additional passive bonuses and skills. Sentinels only have a limited number of slots for moves, so deciding which ones to use was an essential part of forming a strategy. Sentinel upgrades were even more important, though it required a significant amount of meta chips, so I had to give it some thought as to which set I wanted to invest in and with which character. All the customization and progression options gave me a lot of what I want from gameplay. That said, the combat also deserves some recognition. It started off pretty slow to ease me into it, but as I progressed, each level became harder than the next, introducing new stronger enemies that required better upgrades and different tactics to take down. Eventually, it became very fast paced with seemingly endless waves of enemies coming in at all sides causing chaos to ensue. Sometimes there would even be lag due to the amount of things that were happening on the screen. It was thrilling being cornered and trying to do everything I could to survive. Watching large groups of enemies get wiped out by my attacks was a deeply satisfying added bonus. 13 Sentinels is definitely up there among one of the best games I've played this year. It was a big surprise to me because of how unsure I was about it at first. It seemed like the type of game that would be decent at best, but I got it because it was developed by Vanillaware. I'm kinda happy I decided to pull the trigger and play, otherwise it probably would've sat with my other backlogs gathering dust. 
The characters and story were wonderfully done and kept me hooked the whole way through. Combat also starts to shine once enough abilities are unlocked and the difficulty ramps up with stronger enemies and bigger waves. If you're still on the fence about this game, then take the length into consideration. Investing 100 plus hours into a game isn't for everyone, and 13 Sentinels only took me about 30 hours to 100%. It delivers a great experience all around, so if you're looking for something to play that will give you the biggest bang for your buck, but also won't take forever to finish, then definitely check out 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim.